Hi, my name is Sarah Bailey. I'm the voice behind SoWhatSherlock.com and I also run BakerStreetFabrics.com. Today I'm going to do a video tutorial on how to convert a standard uh, piecing template, traditional piecing template, into a paper piece template. Uh, you would want to do this if your traditional template has Y seams or if it's particularly difficult to assemble. Uh, your standard templates are, are uh, projects that would be something like a nine patch or an Ohio star you probably wouldn't need to do this but for something a little more complicated maybe something that's uh, English paper pieced um, or uh, you know a, a complicated sort of star pattern that originally comes with individual template pieces for each unit uh, that would be a great scenario to to use this so let me get started here um, the first thing that you need to do is go to my website and download the the PDF of the original template files. That's just so we can practice and clearly you've done that since you're on the website. Um, so I'm going to pull those up here. So here's my little template PDF. And I'm going to be doing my measurements on this PDF and using this ruler. but. Just pretend that this is uh, real life, uh, you know, on a desk with a piece of paper and a real ruler. Uh, I just happen to have everything set up to be appropriate dimensions here. So um, you use print out the templates, use a regular ruler, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is pull up our pattern. We just need to figure out what we need to measure. So here's the assembly guide that's on my website. So this is just one quarter of the pattern. So we could measure this line plus this line, or we could measure this line plus this line. We are going to get the exact same um, number, which is 8 inches, but I'll just show you how to do that. So on my template, here's the C piece. So here's C1, and that coordinates with this triangle. It just needs to be rotated to match. So I'm going to measure this line across the top which coordinates with this line and there's no need to deal with any of the seam allowances given in the original template um, those will be there for you but we're not going to have to use them for this tutorial um, the software that we're going to use will handle all of that for you so I'm going to take my ruler and I can see that this triangle edge measures two and a half inches now on some templates, if, especially if they're a little more, uh, if they're older or a little more traditional, they may not have exact measurements like this. I created these template pieces, so I know that that's an even measurement. But if your template piece has, um, you know, two and a, uh, two and seven eighths or two and five sixteenths uh, measurements, that's what you're just going to have to work with, and you'll have to estimate it as best you can. It helps if you have a ruler that has um, 16th markings instead of 8th markings or in addition to the 8th markings so if you can find like an architect's ruler that would have that it would be helpful for you um, so I know that this is two and a half inches and now I need to measure this long line on the A3 piece and so that coordinates with this line here So I'm just gonna measure that and that is five and a half inches there's the end of the piece now again, I made this, I know it's the right size. Um, so 5.5 plus 2.5 is going to equal 8. And remember that this is a just a quarter of your block, which would be a half of any side. So let's look at our, here's our, um, our full size block. So we know that this measurement is 8 inches, which means that this whole side has to be 16 inches because it's a mirrored measurement, okay? So we know now that this block is 16 inches by 16 inches finished. So great, the next thing that we need to do is set up the Quilt Assistant software. So I'm going to reduce this. So remember that Quilt Assistant has to be used in Windows, unfortunately that's just the way it is. So this is my Windows installation. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can to fit this into the recording window. I'm going to open up Quilt Assistant here. So this is the window that comes up for you. Um, we're just going to create a new blank project. Now you may, uh, let me do that, you may come up with some uh, preferences if this is the first time you've ever opened Quilt Assistant. 
So if that happens, um, these things are all fine, but the screen diagonal is the important part that we need to set. So if you haven't done this, even if you've opened the application and you don't see the preferences anymore, if you just go up to File, Preferences, everybody needs to make sure that they set this. So this is the screen resolution settings. Um, what I can tell you, I have this listed on my website, but I can tell you that older computers are all going to just need to put a 72 here and a 72 here. Super easy, um, not a big deal. If you have a, a newer Mac, you're going to want to put 109 here. And if you have a Retina Display Mac, you're going to want to put 144 in these boxes. So if you uh, just want to make sure what your screen resolution is, I'm just going to change this number to inches. And then you can take your ruler and measure this box again in real life. And I can see that this is 5 and 3 eighths, right? And this side is three inches exactly. So if I wanted to put those numbers in I would come up with something it would be close to one of, let me just put it in. So use my little calculator here. I'm gonna do three over eight which is three seven five. So I'm gonna do five point three seven five and it, see it it rounds you up and then the height was exactly three inches. I don't need to calculate that. So I'll put three inches there. And what you'll see is that you come up with two numbers who are, that are pretty close to each other here, but not exact. You should just get them as close as you can. The most important part is that these numbers need to be exactly the same. Whether they're both 109.4 or 72.3, whatever those numbers are, they just need to match. So once you've done that, you can hit OK. And you can hit OK on this screen again. All right, so now we're going to make a new document. Let's, I'll go back to that other window. So when you open Quilt Assistant, if you've, already, uh, if you've already set your screen resolution, you can just click on Create a New Blank Project. And so this is the window that comes up. And we know our block is 16 by 16, so that's easy. Oops. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so this is the the empty quilt block template. So I'm just gonna go over these all these buttons and things up here. This is the new document button, and that is the open project button, the save project button, print print preview. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Zooming in and zooming out. This is also a zoom slider here. And then uh, these tools you're going to use a lot. I'll come back to them. You're probably not going to use these too much. This button though is really handy. That is the color tool. So when you're making a pattern you can color the pieces of the pattern using that tool. I'll show you how to do that later. So for now, um, and then he, these are the different tool choices. So there's the design tool, edit tool, coloring tool, selecting tool, and naming tool. We're going to use all these today. Straight line is pretty much the only uh, selection that I make in the kind of design that I use. Um, there are some advanced tutorials on how to use these on the website where you got Quilt Assistant if you're interested. Okay, so. Now we need to set up our document and get it ready. So the first thing we're going to do is make a grid. So this is the snap to grid button. We are going to be snapping to grid, but this grid is way too big for our uses. So what I'm going to do is go to, I'm going to click the little arrow next to the snap to grid button. And you have some preset grid sizes, but we're actually going to do a custom grid size. I usually like to change this snap to distance thing too. It just makes it easier for me. So for the grid, we know that our block is 16 inches and we know that each inch has four quarters, obviously. So if we do 16 times four, that is the number of divisions that you need in your grid in order to know that 
each dot in the grid represents a quarter of an inch. Now, I would prefer that this be an eighth of an inch. Unfortunately, that means that this horizontal, horizontal spacing number would need to have an extra decimal place, and it doesn't allow you to do that, so your measurements are off if you choose an eighth of an inch. There are some other numbers you can use, but I think for most purposes, a quarter inch is fine. If you need to set a line between two dots to make an eighth of an inch, you can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in 64 for my divisions. And you can see the horizontal spacing is a quarter of an inch, which is perfect. I'm just going to hit OK, and now you can see our quilt block. Now, remember, I'm zoomed at 60%, so, but our quilt block, each dot represents a quarter of an inch in our design. So I'm going to zoom in here. And now we're at 100%, and hopefully, if I measure, each dot will represent a quarter of an inch, and it does. So you can see each dot lines up with a quarter of an inch pretty well. All right, like that. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to zoom out again so that uh, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is <clears throat> set the symmetry. So symmetry in traditional terms means that something is the same on one side as the other. Um, so our faces are symmetrical, for example. So the symmetry tool gives you these choices of mirror left, right, up, down, or rotations. So two rotations means that anything I do on the left will happen opposite and diagonal on the right. So I'm just drawing some lines here. I'm only drawing on the left hand side right now where the mouse is, but you can see that a line is being made on the right. So that's two rotations. Today we're going to use four rotations because the block that we're making is symmetrical in four directions. So anything I do up in the top is going to also appear in the bottom so it's basically quadrants, in other words, four quadrants. Okay, so now we're totally set up and we're ready to start designing. So I'm going to go back to my template here. Well, if you recall, that C piece was uh, two and a half inches across the top. And we can go back and measure, actually. The other side is also two and a half inches. So we know that this C piece needs to fit two and a half inches this way and two and a half inches this way. So I'm just going to count two and a half inches, which is ten little grid dots. So right there is number ten. And then I've, I'm clicking and holding right now. I'm going to count the other side. So there's my C piece, and you can see that it's over here as well on the right. So our C piece is on all four corners. Now the other thing that we should probably go ahead and do is draw our uh, quarters. See these lines, although it's marked in the center, they're not actually created, so we need to go ahead and create those divisions. I'm going to go ahead and just click and draw from the center point out. Oh, you can see I've got snap to grid turned on, by the way. If you if that's turned off, you won't see your grid at all. So make sure that you have the snap to grid button turned on. So I'm clicking and dragging from the center up. And you can see that my mouse sort of snaps itself to these little dots. So everything that I do will be able to snap to a dot. Okay, so carrying on, I've done my triangle here. Now the other thing that I can do, let me get my template back up here. The other thing I can do is measure this side of my A3 piece because we know this is five and a half inches, but it doesn't matter because it's just from the edge of the C unit. Let's pull this up again. This piece we know is from the edge of the C unit out to the center division. So we don't need to deal with this measurement. All we need is this measurement, which also happens to line up with the edge of the C piece. So you know that this is two and a half inches. So I'm going to go back 
actually all I really have to do is find that corner piece right here and I'm just gonna we can go ahead and finish this C unit actually Let's do that so we have a little problem here and that is that I've got an extra line right here that I'm not gonna need in the future if you right click you can get rid of any lines that you don't want so I'm gonna right click on that line now I can draw from this dot up to this corner and that makes our triangle piece so we're almost there so let's see back on our pattern again you can see we have the same thing on the other side I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in because I know it's there okay and let's take a look at our pattern it's probably a good time for us to put in these blue triangles so what I'm gonna do is measure this distance here I know that this distance is the same as this distance so what I'm gonna do is draw a line I'm gonna count up whatever that distance is which I'll measure in a minute I'm gonna count up that distance and then I'm just gonna draw a line from there to that corner point and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and then I don't have to measure anything to put the center line from there to there. So I'm going to go and measure my template piece here. And that unit was, those two pieces are A4 and B3. It doesn't matter which one, I just know I'm measuring the short side of the triangle. So let's find A4 and B3. Now. My, ru my ruler won't turn so I can actually use uh, my ruler on my computer and I know that that line is a two inch line so I'm going to go back to find two inches here right so there's two inches so I'm going to draw a line very simple same thing from the other side and you don't even have to measure it because you have a line there already that meets at that point so great now I'm gonna put my center line in so far so good everything is lined up really easily and the last thing we really have to do are these orange triangle points so this unit here and this unit here okay so the last thing we need to do is get those orange triangle pieces in our pattern so these two pieces here or rather this piece and this piece we need to figure out this distance on this star so that's the short side of the A2 piece so we need to know this distance on the template so this is why we had to make sure that our screen resolution was set properly because there are occasional times where you're just gonna have to put a ruler up on the screen and measure it okay so I'm using my real-world ruler here and again you're gonna measure on your paper pieces so I know that this line is two and one eighth inch or pretty close to it so I'm gonna go back here I'm literally taking a physical ruler and putting it on that diagonal line finding two eighths of an inch or pretty close to it which would be right about here now there's a dot close by so what I'm gonna do is just go from that dot up to the intersection that I need to go to and what will happen is that line will extend down to hit the, the line nearest to it perpendicularly so I'm just gonna do the same thing over here and when I let go you'll see that that dotted line carries all the way through to the next line so that's it that's our paper piece design all done Ooh, so that's the hard part done so now we get to do the fun part and that is coloring this document so I'm gonna hit the C key on the keyboard you can also go up here to coloring and then you'll get this color template up so let's say I want to make those that star blue like I did before. 
I'm going to choose blue, but then all these colors are kind of bright. So if you click on color values, you'll get most of the color values that would um, be in the sky blue palette. You can also go to more colors and then mix your own blue if you want. So I'm just going to pick a blue here and I'm going to color in. All I'm doing is picking the color and then clicking the place, kind of like coloring in a coloring book. So I'm picking the blue and then coloring in the piece that I want to color. I'm just going to pick a different blue to do the other side. And then I did oranges for these parts. And then I had a green here. And then a pink. And then a different pink. And then a gray. And that's it. I'm all colored. So take your time, play with the colors, mess with it however you want to mess with it. It really doesn't matter. It's just helping you with your design process. These colors, you're not going to see them in anything except for an image that you export from Quilt Assistant. So have fun and play with them. It doesn't really affect anything. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is get these template pieces named. So we need to name them in the order of paper piecing. And then we need to export our paper piecing template pieces. So in order to do naming, we need to change to the naming tool here, where you can hit the N key on the keyboard. So right now everything looks really confusing and scary. I totally get it. I know it does. So the great thing about Quilt Assistant is it has automatic naming, and I gotta tell you, the automatic naming in Quilt Assistant is pretty darn good. So I'm gonna go to Edit and then Name Shapes for Paper Piecing. Oh, everything looks much more familiar. Now the only problem that we have here, if you'll notice, is we have this like giant K section, and we have this little I section, and we have these H's, and it's like, what the heck am I supposed to do? There's still a Y seam there. How am I supposed to do a Y? The whole point is not to have to do a Y seam. So okay, we have some editing to do. So I'm gonna go back into design mode, and actually, to resolve this Y seam, there's a really simple thing you can do, and that is to just draw a line through the center of just the one triangle. You could do both triangles if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. So I would probably just draw that one line. And then I'm going to go back to naming. You'll see, oh, it's kind of undone itself. So I'm going to go back and do it one more time. And this looks much more comfortable. So you have all of your J section, and that's a half of this quarter unit. And then you have all of your E section, and that's a half of this quarter unit. And then the F section, you'll just stick on to the end. So, and I'm assuming right now that you know how to paper piece. If you don't know how to paper piece, you probably should find a different tutorial to get started with. So anyway, um, the only problem we have now is if I print this in this way, we're going to get all of these different blocks with all these weird names and weird letters and you're like it doesn't make any sense so what we really need to do is just print one quadrant because what we're gonna do is paper piece the pieces for one quadrant four times and then sew them together so the first thing we need to do is fix the naming problem so I'm in the naming tool still if I right click anywhere in the J area I can say move group J to A. That's great. And your colors will shift and your letters will shift. Doesn't matter. A will always stay A now. It's kind of locked in that position. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move group F to B. That makes sense. And then I'm going to move this G piece to C. So we know that this quadrant is the quadrant that we're primarily working on. That we know that the letters are correct. If I think through this paper piecing process, it's doable. There's no Y seams. It should be pretty simple. So now what I'm going to do is go to the select tool. We're going to get ready to print and the thing is we really just need this one quadrant because what we're going to do, because we have 
a pattern with symmetry and we have four quadrants that are all symmetrical, all we have to do is print one quadrant four times and piece one quadrant four times. So actually, we don't need these other three quadrants. We don't care what they look like. We don't care what letters they're using. It doesn't matter. We're just focusing on this one quadrant. So I'm going to go to select and I'm going to choose the pieces just in this quadrant. See how they're all dark and all the other quadrants are light. So I know this is all selected. And I'm going to go to File, Print. Now, you have four tabs here. You have Templates, Paper Piecing, Design, and Fabric Usage. Paper Piecing is the one that you want. And make sure it says Print Selected Shapes, not one of each shape, and not all 12 shapes. So Selected Shapes is the one that you want. I always make sure that these are the boxes that are checked only seam allowances and then I usually do a little quick preview to make sure I've done it the way I want it to be. You can also click on full preview to do a preview if you wanted to look at the entire document in preview. So what I'm gonna do now is hit print. This is all you have to do. We've already named our shapes. We don't have to go back and do that. So I'm gonna hit print. Now here's the thing. If I hit print, I'm going to print out one copy of this quadrant, which is fine. I can change the number of copies here. That's fine. What if you want to get a PDF, though? What if you want a PDF and you want to save it and always have it and you don't want to have to open up Quilt Assistant every time? And what you're going to have to do is install some kind of PDF printer in Windows. So I'm going to put some links to some PDF printer applications in uh, my blog post, which you'll see somewhere in there, um, I'm using Adobe uh, Acrobat Pro. I know some of you don't have that, so I'll provide some free choices there too. But once you have a PDF printer, you can just choose that PDF printer and hit OK. And it'll say, what do you want to save it as? And I'm going to save it as template pieces. Give it a minute. And here are my template pieces that I've just printed. So this is ready for paper piecing. Um, just a note that pieces that have uh, that are just a single piece, like that top triangle in our quadrant, they have like a little number in brackets after the pattern piece number. Just ignore that. It's it's just so that you know that that is a single piece. So you don't have to worry about it you know that this is the top triangle for that pattern piece. So just to show you one more time, if you want to print, use these settings, show seam allowances, print selected shapes. If you were doing a really complicated pattern, uh, paper piece pattern that didn't have any uh, symmetry, you would print all shapes. But we're just going to do selected shapes. And we're going to hit print. If you have a PDF printer installed, choose that here. Otherwise, just pick your printer. If you have four quadrants, you need four copies. And then hit the OK button. And you should print all four copies and you're ready to paper piece. I'm just going to cancel this. Okay, so I think I've covered everything. I know it's a little bit complicated, but for those of you who are familiar with paper piecing and if you're relatively comfortable with a computer this shouldn't be a big deal for you. Uh, if you have questions you can email me at sewatsherlock at gmail.com or you can submit a comment uh, or uh, send me an email on my website sewatsherlock.com. I'm happy to answer all questions and I do so as fast as humanly possible for me. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy your paper piecing.